large and amazing bar. The restaurant even features a window where patrons can see dumplings being made right on site. Pork dumpling, the beef postickers. We also have a vegetarian that we steam. Uh, and we also have uh, some noodles. Uh, the, the top seller is the spicy beef noodle soup. As for Crane's Bar, downtown resident and former bar owner Darren Crane wanted to open a watering hole for his downtown neighbors. He recalls turning down a larger space in favor of this one at the city tower lofts. We were walking past the vault and I said, what's this? And he goes, well, it's storage. I said, I want that. He goes, ah, it's so small. I said, that's what I do. I do small little neighborhood blocks. So what's the appeal of downtown for these entrepreneurs? It has the, it has the edge that Hollywood used to have. Uh, it's innovative. Uh, they're accepting um, uh, new businesses. And it's not just new bars and restaurants popping up downtown. A new school will soon open its doors there. But as Anna Marcos tells us, it's no ordinary school. It's a boarding school with an international flair. Set amidst LA's most iconic skyscrapers, the American University Preparatory School will have an international flair. Chinese businessman and founder Wang Wei even made sure the boarding high school has the right feng shui. It will be next to a hotel in a high-rise that formerly housed the old Lemley Theater. His team also made sure the horoscope provided a favorable day for the announcement. The timing of this launch is very perfect. It could not be better because in a few days, we'll be celebrating the Chinese New Year, ushering into the year of the horse. And the year of horse is largely considered as a year of fortune, great success. The curriculum has its own trendy acronym, STEAM, which stands for its high-tech mix of science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. The student population will be as diverse as LA, and the academic team, top-notch. We're looking at college preparation for domestic and international audiences. We want to develop global leaders. We're interested in interdisciplinary approaches. In the last 10 years, LA's downtown population has exploded from 10,000 to 50,000 residents, and that has brought a growing need for services, including education. We talk a lot about the renaissance of downtown LA, all the new businesses, the new restaurants, the new people coming to live here. Having a boarding school here adds to that. It shows that downtown LA is on a new path. It helps to have this type of an experience uh, to broaden our ability so that we can have a more peaceful world, one where we're based upon trade and competition and not war and destruction. Renovations are already underway. And come August, the doors will open to yet another educational alternative for Angelinos and students around the world. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. The high school will eventually accommodate about 360 students. Curriculum, including room and board, will be under $50,000 a year. Next up is yet another update to the ever-improving Tom Bradley International Terminal at LAX. As Anita Bennett reports, another new feature has been added, this one designed with the airport's young visitors in mind. It's an exciting day for these LA area kindergartners as they take a beach break from school. I played on, on the surfboards with my, with my best friend Melanie. It was not like a playground, it was a, it was a beach playground. Instead of spending the afternoon in class, they were invited to try out the new beach themed play area in the Tom Bradley International Terminal at LAX. This is the very first children's play area at LAX, and it just signifies that we're trying to do anything we can to help our passengers, no matter how small those passengers are. LAX celebrated the opening in December with a birthday party for the space. They even brought in a mascot, six airport therapy pups, and dozens of children from nearby Playa del Rey Elementary School. Play area is fun because you can go upstairs and you can, and you can see through... You can see through that wave. The play area has a series of special features to make sure no one gets hurt, including this padded floor. So all of the materials here are, of course, um, safe for children to be using. The floor has extra padding in it. Um, there's lots of little um, surfboards for children to play in that have rounded edges. Located in the terminal's Villaragosa Pavilion, 
LAX Beach was designed by Westfield Airports with the facility's young passengers in mind. And these discerning critics give the play area a stamp of approval. At Los Angeles International Airport, I'm Anita Bennett for LA This Week. Los Angeles World Airports paid for the $350,000 play area. No money from the city's general fund was used. Honoring civilian volunteers on this anniversary of the Northridge quake, the city aims to better enforce laws that take guns out of the hands of abusers and a new park that's enjoyable for adults and kids alike. These stories and more in City Beat. CERT, or Community Emergency Response Teams, is made up of volunteers who head into disaster areas to provide basic medical aid and help in search and rescue efforts. And on this anniversary of the Northridge quake, city leaders honored those volunteers. The San Fernando Valley is the epicenter of disaster. And as a council member of the 12th District, I'm proud to say that the first CERT team was 30 members from the Devonshire Division Neighborhood Watch Group to help those who can't help themselves in a major disaster. CERT is a program of the Los Angeles Fire Department and goes back to 1986. And just before the new year, City Attorney Mike Fuhrer's office rolled out new efforts to prevent gun violence in domestic abuse situations. Under the current law, any person served with a domestic violence restraining order or criminal protective order must surrender or sell their registered firearms within 24 hours. The new protocol has the LAPD working closely with the city attorney's office to help prosecutors identify those individuals, file appropriate gun charges, and ensure that no defendants fall through the cracks. The city has opened yet another new park, the State Street Recreation Center at 716 North State Street in Boyle Heights. With the help of the California Endowment and the Los Angeles Clippers Foundation, the State Street Rec Center was selected as the first of three locations for 2014 to receive a playground and basketball court refurbishment. The refurbishment included the replacement of the existing playground equipment, the addition of a fitness station, and the resurfacing of the playground area and the basketball court. Council President Herb Wesson represented the city at the recent unveiling of Sung Kyung Chang Square at the intersection of 8th Street and Western Avenue. Chang, a businessman, has for years advocated for LA's Korean American community on issues close to their heart. He's been an advisor to uh, Mayor Garcetti, Villaraigosa, uh, uh, Han. He's been an advisor to my former boss, Nate Holden, Tom Labonge, and to me. Chang was born in North Korea and later made his way to Los Angeles, where he achieved the American dream by becoming a successful entrepreneur in the clothing retail and wholesale business. When talk turns to education or recreation, it's often children's programs that receive the most attention. But some of the city senior citizens are asking for continued support for programs that keep their body and mind young. The senior citizens are putting on a show at Glassell Park Community and Senior Citizen Center's sixth annual end of year celebration. They start slow with Tai Chi and move seamlessly into an upbeat line dancing routine they learned in their physical fitness class. The celebration held jointly with the Los Angeles Unified School District's Division of Adult and Career Education honored local and state leaders for their ongoing support and advocacy. Programs for older adults uh, health and safety parent ed are slated to be cut in June of 2015 throughout all the public schools and community colleges throughout the entire state of California. We want to thank you for being a leader saving our division, our programs for up until June of 2015 and we need you to continue fighting for us for his part, Senator Kevin DeLeon says we must not forget those who came before us. As elected officials, regardless of what our age may be, or what generation, that it's our role and responsibility to take care of those who took care of us. Mayor Eric Garcetti and Councilmember Gil Cedillo, both of whom were unable to attend but represented at the event by members of their office, were also honored for their commitment to the city's senior citizens. So each one of you that's sitting here that makes those decisions at the state level, board level, 
we ask you to save programs for adult education. Join yeah. the mayor to yeah. save the programs for adult education. This is truly uh, a celebration, a celebration of uh, the year of participating in programs um, and classes where you've been able to strengthen your, your muscles, where you've been able to expand your mind and really get in touch with your soul. And this group of seniors made sure no one was safe from some much needed exercise. Even Senator De Leon got pulled onto the dance floor for a few shakes. Proof that even at their age, these seniors have still got a lot to teach the younger generation. In this week's list of things to do, a weekly cardio class, music of Hawaii comes to Little Tokyo, and Japanese taiko drumming at UCLA. Fitness guru and high-level trainer Nathan Ford will lead a new donation-based fundraising fitness program at the Barnsdall Art Park every Saturday from 9 to 9.45 a.m. You're invited to take part in this weekly 45-minute cardio class on the West Lawn. Donations will benefit Barnsdall Art Park. This high-energy group fitness class offers a full-body workout combining strength training and cardio, suitable for the active individual. The first class is on Saturday, January 25th. Barnsdall Art Park is located at 4800 Hollywood Boulevard. More details can be found at barnsdall.org. Hawaii's famed guitarist, vocalist, and songwriter Willie Kahai Ali'i, better known as Willie K, is back at the Japanese American Cultural and Community Center on Saturday, January 25th. He'll bring his unique brand of music from traditional and contemporary Hawaiian to blues and rock to audiences at 7.30 p.m. The JACCC is located at 244 South San Pedro Street in Little Tokyo downtown. Go to JACCC.org for ticket prices and other details. According to a story written in one of Japan's oldest books, taiko drumming was created to lure the goddess of sunlight from her cave. On Sunday, January 26th, you can help lure the goddess from her hiding place when you attend the free family jam, Drum Up the Sun Taiko event from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Fowler Museum at UCLA. UCLA's Kyoto Taiko will put on a performance. You'll also get to make your own drum out of recycled materials. The Fowler Museum is located at the North Campus at UCLA. Detailed maps and parking instructions can be found by going to fowler.ucla.edu. And that's a look at some upcoming things to do. The Department of Recreation and Parks is helping youngsters show off their athletic skills and earn some coveted bragging rights. Anita Bennett explains. After the regular season ends for young flag football and soccer players, the athletes have a chance to test their skills through the Department of Recreation and Parks annual Valley Shoreline All-Star Playoffs. It's fun like to play with my friends and get involved in playing a sport. The best of the best young players recently made it to the championship tournament. It was held on the fields at Balboa Recreation Center in Encino. Lots of different parks. I think we have uh, Balboa, Granada Hills, Cheviot, uh, pretty much everybody who had uh, fall sports like soccer and flag football participated or at least submitted a team into this tournament. All of the teams were made up of players who normally participate in soccer and flag football games at their neighborhood city-run parks. The competition was great in this tournament and we were happy to be in it. The rec center put on a great show and we're uh, glad, glad to be part of our Northridge Rec Center and uh, we love it. The tournament was open to kids between the ages of 9 and 12 years old. I've always liked playing flag football. I like running around the field and yanking the flag off somebody while they're running and throwing it back. The tournament currently attracts about 150 young athletes. Organizers say it helps keep them busy, they make new friends, and they remember this experience for the rest of their lives. I'm Anita Bennett for LA This Week. For more information on joining these youth sports programs, contact your neighborhood city-run recreation center. And that's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ellen Chang. A reminder that you could catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.
Driver, over here. Sir, remove your shoes. Sir, remove your shoes and stand here. You have to focus when crossing a street. Every day, pedestrians are seriously injured or even killed because they're not paying attention when they cross or because drivers fail to yield. A pedestrian always has the right of way. Pay attention, obey the law, or deal with the consequences. Look before you cross. Cars can't see you. Hi, I'm Renee, representing for Juventus from Van Nuys. You're watching LA City View, Channel 35, our city, our channel.
Yeah. Right. Good morning, everybody. This is a wonderful day in Los Angeles. It's Friday, the 24th day of January 2014. This is the Los Angeles City Council. We're in the John Ferraro Chambers of the Grand City Hall of Los Angeles, which was built in 1928. I want to call on the great councilman of the 8th District, who's very happy every year because usually a team from his district is to be honored, and it's usually the same team. Please welcome Councilmember Bernard Parks. Thank you very much, and I'd like to ask uh, Principal Ramon Cor Corley to come up, Coach Garrett, all of the team and coaches, come on up. Colleagues, today we're here to celebrate uh, Crenshaw High School Cougars football team recent victory in the city section Division I championship game against, uh, where's Joe? He had to miss, he, he had to excuse himself, Mr. Parks, he did. today. So yes. we'll put it on tape. Against Norborn uh, High School uh, Gauchos, the Cougars had an impressive record of 10 wins, 4 losses. Crenshaw also beat Jefferson, Dorsey, and Venice in the playoffs before taking down a seasoned Norborn team 20 to 13 at East Los Angeles College. The December 6 victory gave the fourth Division I title to Coach Garrett. Coach Garrett has been making a difference in Los Angeles City section since 1988. He is also one of the area's most successful and respected coaches. He has led the Cougars to a 14 and 1 record in 2009, and they played in the state open division game, which we honored them in 2009. The Cougars have won over 90 games under Coach Garrett since 2004. But according to those around LA City Section, certainly Crenshaw, Coach Garrett does much more than teach football. And because of him, these outstanding student athletes, the Crenshaw Cougars, are currently ranked 29th in the state of California. So I'd like to have my certificate, Andrew, so we can present it to our principal, Mr. Corley, and have him make some comments. Andrew. There you go. So Mr. Corley, on behalf of the City of Los Angeles, we'd like to commend you and these student athletes for their performance this year and like to present this to you and have you make some comments. First, I'd like to say good morning and thank you to our council member, council member Bernard Parks. Um, for this honor of honoring our outstanding uh, student athletes. Um, and and I, I would not uh, like to leave here without saying um, none of this is possible without the hard work and dedication of several individuals that volunteer a lot of time because, you know, high school football coaches don't make a lot of money. Um, but none of this is possible without the dedication of Coach Robert Garrett. And I think, and I think uh, all the players and all the coaches that participate in this, in this uh, fantastic season would, would join me in, in agreeing with that. Um, this, this man dedicates a lot of his time, his energy, his focus to not only coaching them on the football field, but mentoring them off the football field. He gets intimately involved with not only their personal lives, but also their families as well. Um, and so I, I want to take this opportunity to, to thank you again, but also to salute him for all the hard work and the dedication that he has contributed to our school community. Crenshaw is a better place because of him. So thank you. Coach Gary. Thank you very much, Coach. Wow, that's heartwarming. Good morning. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Chief. Appreciate you. Um, we are uh, grateful to accept this honor on behalf of our team. Uh, in reference to a safe area to be in, uh, we're grateful that uh, the city can provide services like the grid program in our area. Uh, that is very um, good for us to be allowed to participate in football nights, uh, days, evenings. We're appreciative of that. But our team would not have been successful if we were not a team. We do not have a superstar on our team. We have a team, uh, T-E-A-M, not a I and not a U. We have a team. And uh, because of our team effort, we're able to accomplish these goals. So we appreciate you for honoring us, and uh, we hope to be here next year as well. Yeah. Why don't you introduce yeah. the students to the speak? Okay, I will. 
uh, now introduce uh, student Kenneth Davis. He's one of our leaders, and uh, he will um, have a word. Kenneth? Well, um, it's, it's an honor to have played for uh, Coach Garrett and also to play for uh, Crenshaw High and also my teammates behind me. Uh, I've been playing there for four years, and it's been a great experience. Uh, I became a better person because of my coach. He taught me a lot of things, how to grow up and how to just be a man and also take leadership when all of my teammates are down and also to help pick up my teammates behind me. This is a, a band of brothers that's behind me and we had a great season. Um, the ones that are left behind, I wish them they have a great season and be back here next year. And I'm just grateful for the experience to be here. Thank you very much. And then, yeah. Okay, now we have a Cougar cheer. Cougar cheer. Yeah, something with Cougar in it. Okay, well, they could do that. All right, let's go, team. Turn it up. Turn it up. Well, we want to thank you, Mr. Parks. We're gonna, we've got a few more. One, two, three. Yeah! One, two, three. Yeah! Crenshaw, all right, good job, Crenshaw. Crenshaw Cougars. Congratulations, thank you, Mr. Parks. And uh, coaches, congratulations, and the administration, great job. Mr. Cedillo, we thank you. I'm sorry, man. So we're going to call the roll. Blumenfeld, Bonham, Buscano, Cedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Wizard, Caress, Recording, LaBange, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Parks, Price, Wesson, 11 members, President, Quorum, Mr. President. First order of business. Approval of the minutes. Mr. Cedillo moves, and Mr. Englander seconds. Next is community resolutions for approval. Ms. Martinez moves, and Mr. Bonham seconds. Mr. President, there's a request to continue item one to February 7th. So ordered, item one. Item two is an item for which public hearing has been held. Okay, item, it has been held. Members, does anyone want to speak on item two? See none. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. There's a request for that item to go forthwith. Forthwith ordered. Item three is an item for which public hearings have not been held. Item three, I'm gonna check the cards here. Arnold Sachs, oh. John Walsh, Mr. Herman. Arnold Sachs is not here at present. Mr. Walsh, Mr. Herman. John Walsh, blogging at hollywoodhighlands.org. Please come to our website for some amazing information. Item three concerns removing various properties from the REAP. Now, uh, Mr. Caress isn't here, but he claims that unless I have property, I'm not allowed to speak on it. That's his fascist position. Well, I don't own property at 1227 24th Street, but I'm glad that the landlord is being forced to make repairs to bring it up to code. I don't live at 2664 South Cochrane Avenue, but those of you who do know that your building was not up to code. The city came in when you asked them to. The city prevented the landlord from, from collecting rent. You sent your rent to the city instead. And then once all of these code violations were repaired, then it comes here and then the uh, property owner, the slumlord, uh, who has repaired the slum conditions, is allowed to collect his rent. Now, I've been told by Mr. Koretz that I'm not allowed to say this. So if you want to arrest me for getting up here and talking about REAP 
and talking about how all we renters are interested in this fine. I'm waiting to be arrested uh, or for disrupting the meeting. Uh, 4623 East Paula Street, again, a uh, slumlord landlord has been caught, and I'm telling you right now, if you have any code violations out there, and they're not going to tell you, they, they get money from the slumlords, go to the city, and the city will do a good job. These people won't. Hollywood, Highlands.org. We are for the people who are watching. These people are for their campaign contributors. Mr. Herman. When it comes to rental units in Los Angeles, REAP, other, otherwise known as Rent Escrow Account Program, deals with violations of habitability, right? So the city places a, the property on status for a citation for habitability violations. The tenants have the right to option to pay either the property owner or the city of Los Angeles. You have rights here in Los Angeles. Don't be afraid to come here and get your rent escrow or your REAPs down to cost, because this is the perfect place to vent out effective speak when it comes to the violations and citations, the injustice placed upon you. We are all affected by rental units that are not livable, slumlord conditions, so in order to improve the quality of our life in Los Angeles, we must take an action that represents the rental units or you, the tenants. But altogether, the rental payments are used to pay for costs associated to the repairs at the rental property, not to be put into the general public funds. Mr. Mike Fuhrer, welcome to Los Angeles. Good to see you again. Delighted that flight from uh, Sacramento with you when you were first running. Great job, keep it up. All righty. And going back onto topic, Mr. Koretz has no purpose to say that we're not effect, uh, effective speakers. We are effective speakers because we come here to challenge the government institute that deprives all of you Angelinos the right not just to speak under the First Amendment, but the right to speak on behalf of an item, even if you are not living in that area, but are you impacted by the fact that you are a tax rate Mr. Payer. Herman is complete. Mr. Sachs, name called second time on this item. Thank you. Sorry, I was at the mayor's help desk. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Arnold Sachs. And um, actually, this whole agenda speaks volumes regarding what Mr. Koretz talked about. There's a lien item, there's one item that's been held in committee, and there's these resolutions for rent escrow. And we have 10, 11 council members here, and their staff collecting $187,000 for the year for this sandbox stuff. It's ridiculous. You just got a report from a commission that Mr. Wesson, Councilman Wesson, put together that detailed some problems in the city. And you're going to sit around. Excuse me. Hold your time, please, Mr. Uh, city Attorney. He should be talking about the REAP issue. Uh, uh, Thank uh, you very uh, much. Well, you're right, sir. And, and uh, I am venting a little bit off subject. So this is back to the manpower, the use of manpower. You have inspectors going out for REAP. But you have no inspectors going out to check sidewalks. You have no inspectors going out to check foreclosed mortgage properties that have gone into disrepair. And you're sitting here with your staff members, staffing, collecting money for REAP. What? Actually, this would be a better day for uh, Councilman Wesson to give you a day off again, because everything is ending up in committees and not being discussed in front of the city council or in front of the public on TV where more people get an opportunity to listen. We're told at the MTA that down to three minutes because we're not on subject or we, we, 
whatever. We're not even told anything. But nevertheless, this is a perfect opportunity to actually agree somewhat with Kurtz. But again, it comes back to answering about measure uh, prop. That completes Brown your Act. comments. All right, no other speakers on that queue. Open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Eleven ayes. So ordered. Madam Clerk, at this time, it completes the numbered agenda. I have public comment. May I call Mr. Walsh, followed by Mr. Herman, followed by Ms. Ramirez, followed by Mr. Sachs. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. You can't see my Jew face because uh, uh, the chairman here, Mr. LeBond, is an anti-Semite. He won't let you see my face. Uh, that's fine. I've dealt with anti-Semites. Six million of my relatives died in the camps. I'm here. Uh, let me tell you right now, number one, ten-story crack house. It's at, uh, at the corner of Yuck and Argyle in Tom LaBonge's neighborhood. He claims there's no graffiti on it, that it's all cleaned up. I live across the street. Okay, go to my website and see the pictures. And I want everybody to know we're helping you in South L.A. Because everyone knows in South L.A., because of Bernard Parks and because of Curran Price, you can't sell drugs on the street. It's not allowed. You make the cops stop it. But you can come to Hollywood and you can come to, uh, uh, to Mitch's district and to LaBonge's district and you can buy it. And I'm asking you, I'm asking you to answer the question, Mr. LaBonge, and the question I want to answer is, why won't you clean out the crack, 10-story crack house? Come to the website, hollywoodhighlands.org. You will see pictures of it. It's graffiti smeared. Uh, there's drugs going on. There's uh, drug dealing going on. Remember, it's a containment area. You want to buy your drugs, anybody, come to Hollywood. That's where you can buy your drugs. And we found out yesterday that the two airport offices that were assigned to protect the TSA agency. Now they're putting me up because I called you an anti-Semite. That's the way you get up. But the two TSA agents, the TSA, TSA agent who was murdered was because the two police officers, airport police officers, left their station to go to the bathroom and to hang out. The blood is on the mayor. The blood is on you. Hollywood Mr. Highlands. Walsh, Mr. Org. Walsh, Mr. Walsh, Mr. Walsh, will you turn around? For the record, 1800 Argyle has been reported to the fire department. They're working on it and other agencies. Since I'm working when? with Mr. O since yesterday. Yeah, since okay, yesterday. thank you very much. And Mr. Walsh, have a good weekend. Mr. Herman, stand up and come to the microphone or leave the building. At your sacrifice, it is troubling, Los Angeles, that these elected officials continue to hinder not just us as speakers, but hinder all of you, the public, by their actions. Take, for example, what happened with Mr. Ridley Mark Thomas. Was it okay for him to convert his garage into a home with a heater, an air conditioning unit, at the cost of whom? All of you, the taxpayers. Yes, the department must investigate this building and safety issue because it affects your homes, the quality of life in your neighborhoods when you allow a garage conversion. Get the damn permits. Permits protect people in this city. The injustice of not getting permits is the idea of what this city has done to all of us, and that's ignore the issue. And today, on our streets and sidewalks that are still unsafe, thanks to Mr. Weezar, with the barrier on Soto Street, by Hazard Park. That barrier is still there. I cannot maneuver myself safely there without injuring myself. So all this council does is bring harm. Harm, harm, harm to the public. So when will these inspectors from the department by Mr. Luke Zemperman take a comprehensive investigation into my al your alleged allegations that Mr. Riley did nothing in inappropriate or improper? You're abusing our government. You yourselves, 
elected officials that represent the law of local government. So yes, I take offense to that. And yes, and to this day, the racist discrimination injustice made by your alleged allegations that we are a threat? No, we're not threat. We're speaking on our First, our first Amendment rights, Mr. LaBonge. Ms. Ramirez, next speaker. Good morning. This is a matter of principle. Deport, deport, deport. Again, we have a gang-banging epidemic, vicious and criminal felons uh, run amok. Again, this is in reference to uh, high-rise buildings at 10535 Wilshire Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 90024, including the Westwood Wilshire Corridor and the Beverly Hills Century City uh, area. Again, these are unsafe, noisy, filthy, hostile, full-service, and expensive high-rise buildings that, again, are infested with crackheads, drug addicts. And again, these crackheads and drug addicts and uh, criminal illegal felon aliens, as well as black employees, AWAT and Antenna, who run the full-service uh, place do not help uh, by stay, uh, do not help stop the hostility in the building against law abiding tenants and again the Latinos who are employed there are also part of the criminal ring including your Iranian criminal who, aliens who are also owners and who also run a criminal Iranian ring in the Westwood Wilshire area and many of them are also involved with the criminal illegal Latinos who are peddling drugs into the building to these junkies um, and the crimes that you're having there are mail theft, ID theft, noise, chronic noise disturbances, uh, ground theft, home invasion robberies and full, again full violations of your constitutional civil rights and um, uh, all other rights. Again, let me just make it clear. Uh, you have the West LA Police Department, the Homeowners Association, and the owners who do not help the renters who are renting from these owners. They bounce you back for uh, any complaints back to the West LA Pigs, and the West LA Pigs bounces you back to the homeowners, and the homeowners bounce you back to the owners. So you're playing Mickey Mouse with all these bunch of j jackasses. Thank you. Mr. Sachs. Start the clock. Restart the clock, please. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Arnold Sachs. Um, wonderful meeting in Metro yesterday. Today's uh, headline in the Daily Breeze, and I'm not sure if it's in the Daily News because they pretty much print the same thing, that Metro is considering A or B, a fair increase in another sales tax. And so you want to say, why? But you're not going to get an answer because, you want to say why? Because Measure R was the answer. Measure R, $1.3 billion a year, $40 billion. Let's just take as an example, $600 million, which has been approximately how much they've collected in revenue in sales tax since 2009 for Measure R. So 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, that's five years, $600 million. That's $3 billion in Measure R revenue. But then you get $3 billion in Prop A revenue, because that's another half cent sales tax. And then you get $3 billion in Prop C revenue, because that's another half cent sales tax. So that's $9 billion that Metro's gotten in five years, which is actually less than half of the $1.3 billion that they'd be collecting on a yearly basis if they had told the truth in the first place. But they didn't. So now you can believe them. Isn't that right, Mr. Bonin? You're on the Metro Board. And our other outstanding gentleman, Mr. Kikorian, who's the budget guy, he's on the board, but he's not here. So you want to get up and you ask questions, but you can't, because Metro has changed their policy. Three minutes on the consent, non-consent calendar. Yet they have rules. As a matter of fact, they made specific rules about what constitute not paying your fare. Specific. They have specific rules on the speaker card. Mr. They don't pay Sack, attention. That completes your time. And that is no other card here, so 
the United States Constitution allows free speech and public speech, and we just had that this morning. That completes our agenda. So, Madam Clerk, what's before us? Council has motions for post and referral. So ordered. Uh, how about the some announcements, uh, members? Any announcements, Ms. Bloomfield? Hello? Yeah, this, this weekend, this Saturday, I'm doing a community bike ride uh, starting in my district office, which is on 19040 Van Owen, the corner of Van Owen and Van Alden. It's open to the public. We already have about 75, 100 people coming. It'll be a great, easy ride. Uh, take one hour. Uh, folks of all, probably between 12 and N80 is a good age range, but anybody who wants to join the ride is welcome. Thank you, Bob. It's going to be a nice weekend to do that. Any other announcements? There's a hike at Griffith Park, a hike for health with the Get to Know program of young students. Everybody's welcome to come. Start at Boy Scout Road at 9.30 tomorrow morning, Saturday, just inside the park at Vermont Avenue. Uh, Madam, Mr. CLA, all the motions have been circulated? They've been signed in the process, so we're complete on that task. Mr. Wesson? Waiting for a journey. All right, so uh, see another other announcements. All rise for adjourning motions. Sergeant, will you inform our guest? All rise for adjourning motions. Mr. Wesson. Thank you, uh, Mr. President and members. Today I rise to adjourn in the memory of Henrietta Elmore Willis, who was the mother of our area planning commissioner and community activist, Gail. Uh, Willis. She was born in 1919 in Texas, uh, one of uh, 12 children. They moved to, in fact, before I get to that point, she went to Southern, Texas Southern University, and when she went there, it used to be known as Houston College for Negroes, and she majored in math. They moved to uh, Los Angeles in, in or around 1994, where she married the uh, Reverend Daniel Willis. They had four uh, children themselves. Uh, Miss uh, Willis was an elementary school teacher for 47 years, and she was also a member of Messiah Baptist Church, which is the uh, church that that I belong to, and. It would, it would always be amazing to watch this little uh, woman, when the spirit would hit her, to watch her twirl around at the, the speed of light, just in, in enjoying her faith and enjoying the, uh, the, the service. She has worked on numerous political campaigns, and I'll be honest, she worked on several of, of mine, and I think that it's from her work that her daughter, Gail, decided to be engaged uh, in politics as well. So with that said, I ask that we all again rise in her memory and to the uh, Willis family, you have our prayers and our thoughts. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Wesson. Members, any other journey? Mr. Bloomfield. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I ask that we adjourn in the memory of Eduardo Cruz. Uh, he's my executive assistant, Miriam Lopez's nine-year-old nephew, who tragically passed away this Sunday. <clears throat> and when one of our little uh, Angelinos ascends to heaven early, it's the whole city suffers. Eduardo, who's affectionately known as Weil by his friends and family, was born on June 22, 2004, in Los Angeles to uh, Claudia Diaz de Leon and Mario Cruz. He was a smart kid who had many dreams and aspirations. He was wise beyond his years. He could reason and understand complex ideas and would be able to explain these concepts to his friends and family. He was a fourth grader who attended TAS Charter School in Councilmember Price's district. He loved to play sports and being outdoors, going to the Natural History Museum and playing video games with his cousins. He loved going to school and learning and he was a voracious reader who loved comic books and could read for hours. He was artistic and creative and would draw and describe in detail his thoughts and ideas. He had a real interest in science, and he wanted to be an astronaut. He was infatuated with studying about space. 
For a class project, he wrote about Mars and, and recreated a model of the Mars yeah. rover with Legos, aluminum foil, and, and lots of creativity. Wyatt was a very loving, greeting family, had a, a, a very loving and greeting family. With, he greeted his family with tender hugs and warm and genuine embraces. He'll be remembered for his caring and selfless nature. Uh, the thought of others, um, he used to buy snacks for his cousins and brothers and friends. He always knew what they wanted. He had a speech impediment, but that never stopped him from trying his best and participating without regard of what his peers would say about it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, asthma took his life early. He's survived by his mother, Claudia, father, Mario, brothers, Sebastian and Santiago, two grandmothers, two great-grandmothers, a grandfather, 20 cousins, and a lot of aunts and uncles. So Miriam, your city family joins you and your family in mourning the loss of Eduardo Cruz. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Mr. Sedia. Yes, um, I also would like to talk about an extension of the city family. Uh, we have uh, a real star on our, on our staff, Jose Rodriguez. Uh, many of you may have known him. He worked for uh, Senator Alacon in the past. Uh, his father just passed this weekend. Uh, his father, like my father, come from uh, Durango, Mexico. And he was born in 1944 and came to this country in 1973. Immigration laws were much easier then and he was able to obtain his uh, legal residency uh, and get a driver's license. When he got his driver's license, he fell in love with uh, the open road and became a, a, one of these long distance uh, truck drivers and did that until his career ended uh, in the mid 80s. Uh, he's very proud of his son, Jose. Uh, very proud of his, his uh, commitment to public service and so he was always, uh, like my father was always, asking us about what was going on in politics, what was uh, the council member doing, what was the senator doing, what votes were taking place. Uh, and so he's very, very proud of, of uh, Jose. Uh, he enjoyed a good poker game, a juicy in and out burger, and uh, listening to uh, Vicente Fernandez. Uh, he, he used to smoke and drink, but he stopped eight years ago, but he never stopped uh, his love for uh, his Dodgers. Uh, his country for the great opportunities that it, it gave him. Um, a few years ago, he started having kidney problems. Uh, he's very diligent in addressing them, and his doctors were, were very optimistic. But um, uh, unfortunately, uh, he got cancer. And uh, although diligent in his efforts to to combat it, um, just most recently, a lot of his organs began to shut down. And he fought valiantly until the end. He survived by his wife, uh, Ingracia, his son, Jose, uh, his grandchildren, uh, Tonito, Justin, Hannah, his sisters, Lupe, Amparo, Socorro, Yolanda, and Lola, his brothers, Nielo, and Anastasio. And I said he survived by his son, Jose, and his son, let us be very clear about this, Juvenal, his son Jose, and his son Juvenal. Uh, and uh, as I said, it's an extension of the city family. When uh, our staffers lose someone, we all uh, suffer with them. So may he rest in peace. Thank you very much. Members, I see no other adjourning motions. Let's go on and serve the city well. Every day is a blessing. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>